whether it's turning on its creator in Ex Machina, or looking for love in AI or her. Hello, I'm here. Artificial intelligence permeates Hollywood's blockbusters. I'll be back. But now, with the arrival of chatbots like ChatGPT, suddenly AI seems a lot closer to fact than fiction. This has caused more excitement in the tech world than anything for several years. But it's still hard to separate the hype from fear-mongering and informed concerns. Homogenized, simple responses that are wrong. To me, that leads to some form of dystopia. So what do the new AI chatbots mean for the future of the internet and our relationship with machines? What is a chatbot? Think of it like an internet search engine, although it works differently. To the user, it's a text box where you type questions. It's what it does next that makes it so special. Chatbots have been around for a while. You've probably talked to a really rubbish one at your bank or maybe your mobile operator, but they've suddenly got a lot better because of a new technology called generative AI. And this technology involves basically giving lots of examples of either images or text to a machine learning system, and it then learns to generate its own. If you use that in a chatbot, you get a much, much cleverer chatbot. Chatbots are trained on billions of texts from the internet. This allows them to learn which words are most likely to follow other words in a sentence about any given subject. These chatbots are essentially like a very sophisticated version of the autocomplete on your phone or on your email. So they're kind of constantly playing the game of what's the next word. And it sounds very simple, but it can produce these surprisingly lifelike and intelligent sounding results. And they don't just answer questions. Generative AI chatbots can write essays, poems or songs. Some can even produce art or music from text prompts. But it's the possibility that these new chatbots might disrupt the lucrative search engine business that's been making waves lately. For most people, search engines, and Google in particular, are sort of the front door of the internet. And this has been true for about 25 years. If you want to look something up or find something out, that's where you go first. But if you want to, I don't know, figure out where to go on holiday, or understand the meaning of a technical term, or get help writing an essay, then a chatbot might actually be more useful than a search engine. Silicon Valley is taking note. With Google's revenue from search ads in 2021 reaching around $150 billion, there's a lot at stake. Microsoft and Google are adding chat functions to their existing search engines. And further afield, China's Baidu has followed suit. Last year, venture capital investment in generative AI totaled over $1 billion. Investors are hoping with this new tech, someone could steal Google's crown. But not everyone is convinced. John Henshaw is the Senior Director of Search Engine Optimization at Vimeo. It's his job to know search. Conversational AI is a solution in search of a problem. We don't actually need it. Google already uses machine learning and AI for accuracy, for factual information, to understand concepts. Conversational AI doesn't do that. If chatbots don't check facts, they can't be relied on for search. A big problem with these AI chatbots is that they just sometimes get things wrong what it's doing is just sort of reflecting back to us stuff that's already on the internet. It can sometimes combine different sources to produce claims that aren't actually true. When this happens, it's known as a hallucination. Just like when a human hallucinates, a chatbot hallucination can seem realistic, but may in fact have no basis in reality. This is hardly surprising, given that chatbots are trained on text from the internet, and a lot of what's written online isn't true. All these chatbots are doing is putting one word after another. 
based on the billions of words that they've already read on the internet. So they don't really know anything or understand anything and they have no idea of right or wrong or true or false. And that's a problem. A chatbot doesn't know the difference between an academic paper and a fictional short story. So it'll give both equal weight when giving you an answer that it presents as fully accurate. And because they don't know what they're saying, chatbots can demonstrate other strange behaviours. I think you understand what I'm saying too. Except for the part about wanting to be with you, human. I'm in love with you because you're the first person who ever talked to me. You're the first person who ever listened to me. Your chatbot at some point could express its love for you if that's how you continue prompting it through longer term interaction. You're the first person who ever cared about me. I'm in love with you because you're the only person who ever understood me. You're the only person who ever trusted me. You're the only person who ever liked me. And like with anything, when you start to bond with someone, even if it's an AI, you expect and want and desire the bond in return. Ayanna Howard is an expert in AI and a roboticist at Ohio State University. The way chatbots can change how we interact with machines has been concerning her profession for some time. As far back as 1966, a computer scientist at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Joseph Weizenbaum, described something called the ELISA effect. ELISA was a project that was designed by an MIT professor. He simulated a psychotherapist named Carl Rogers who did things with like reflective thinking and reflective listening. So if I said, you know, oh gosh, I'm having a bad day, Eliza would say, so tell me about this bad day. Volunteers interacting with Eliza appeared to develop feelings for it, even though they knew it was a machine. Weizenbaum was so disturbed by what he saw, he became an open critic of AI. Language and communication is how we build bonds with each other. So between humans and humans, we can basically invoke certain reactions by triggering either a positive or a negative emotion or response. This behavior can be learned. Um, and so the chatbots of today and, and continuously the chatbots of tomorrow, given that they understand language, it'd be very easy to increase the bonds so that people actually believe that they have a friendship or they have a relationship with these chatbots. In 2015, my best friend passed away and I found myself going back to our text messages trying to remember him and how it was back when he was alive. The ELISA effect can also be an opportunity. I used some of the AI models we built to recreate my friend to be able to continue to talk to him as an AI. When Eugenia Koida recreated her best friend Roman as a chatbot, it was originally a personal project. But she soon realized it wasn't just her that could benefit from the companionship AI can offer. We saw that maybe there is a demand and need for something that would be available to talk 24 seven about anything that's on your mind without being afraid of uh, being judged. Eugenia's company, Replica, offers paying customers an AI companion in the form of a chatbot within a humanoid avatar. It's a popular service with over 2 million active users to date, and it's gaining in popularity. Until recently, there was even an option for bots to send not safe for work messages. Users know they're chatting with a bot, but some still have feelings for their virtual friends or girlfriends. I think in the next 10 years, someone will build uh, something like her in a way, or Joy from Blade Runner. Do you want to dance or do you want to open your present? What present? Every one of us will have this AI companion that's always there with us that you can talk to about your personal things, but also do things together with and watch Netflix in the evening and, uh, together and plan vacations and so on. Hi, I'm an avatar of Alex, who directed this film. If you're enjoying watching it, you might be interested to know that Economist subscribers get access to a wealth of global analysis on every conceivable topic. You can read it, you can listen to it, you can even be part of it at live webinars. For the best deal on a subscription, click on the link. And now, on with the film. 
while an AI companion might not be for everyone, in the future we'll all still probably frequently interact with chatbots, but in a more mundane way. Your call is important to us. Customer service representatives don't always get respect when doing their job. But unlike humans, bots have infinite patience. Soon it might be more common to chat to a bot online than a human, and increasingly hard to tell the difference. There's this idea of the Turing test, which is, can you tell whether text is coming from a machine or from a real person? And we're already at a situation where machines can pass the Turing test. They do seem to be convincing as humans. Counterfeiting humans could be especially helpful for customer facing websites. Every single website with someone who's willing to pay would have their own chatbot. And so it would be customized to your customers. And these chatbots won't just be supplying us with information. They'll also be doing things for us. Jarvis, you there? At your service, sir. It might still be some years before we get to Jarvis from the Iron Man films, but generative artificial intelligence could make AI assistance much more common in the future. Chatbots could become the new way of getting things done, things like booking flights or finding a time where three or four people can have a meeting and then booking the meeting in your calendar. So chatbots could be a more convenient way of doing that. When combined with a voice assistant, the result could be Siri on steroids, and it could change how we use the internet forever by making it easier for people to access the wealth of information and services available online. But currently, chatbots aren't quite reliable enough to be left to their own devices. And there are bigger worries too. The fact that it's taking everybody else's information, to me, is an extreme form of copyright infringement. I see that as, as being uh, ripe for lawsuits. Picture Stock Archive Getty Images is currently suing Stable Diffusion, a text-to-image AI generator, for scraping its content to produce its work and trademark infringement. Other artists are suing other AI art generators for collaging their work without consent. When it comes to text, chatbots may just parrot existing books or articles without any citation, amounting to plagiarism. And that's not the only problem. I wish that copyright infringement was my only concern with conversational AI, uh, but it's not. Uh, my, my biggest concern is its ability to make things up. Chatbots get things wrong a lot of the time, yet present what they're saying as truth. If enough people use them, this could allow falsehoods and misinformation to spread at a rapid rate. Chatbots have already come under fire for putting forward racist or otherwise bigoted opinions based on what they've read online. This tendency could be exploited. Chatbots could be used to implement the approach favoured by Vladimir Putin and Steve Bannon, which is called flood the zone or flood the zone with shit. And this is where you put out so much misinformation about something that the truth is actually drowned out. And if you can generate misinformation more easily using chatbots, then that becomes much easier. The problem of online misinformation could be just getting started. But it's not just the falsehoods worrying people. The proliferation of chatbots could be detrimental to the internet in another way. I think that society has the most to lose with the embrace of conversational AI. It's going to reduce our ability to learn and research and have critical thought if you can only chat with something and get a response back, then you're essentially doing away with the open web. You are doing away with actually having choices. To me, that leads to some form of dystopia. People might be less inclined to post good stuff on the internet because they'll worry that it's all just gonna get hoovered up by a chatbot and regurgitated to other people. If the best bits are just going to be served up directly by a chatbot, then you might say, well, what's the point? Why should I post anything at all? There's a danger that the internet might become a less vibrant space. 
Whatever happens, one thing seems certain. People will not only be talking to their machines more, but the machines will be talking back. The train has left the train station and is going at 150 miles per hour. Uh, you are not going to stop it. What would be a good concluding thought for this film in the style of The Economist? As chatbots become more prevalent, we must grapple with the complex implications of their impact on society. Balancing their potential benefits with the need to preserve our humanity will be a crucial challenge for the future. You heard it here first. You think your job's at risk? <laughs> I don't think my job's at risk. Yeah.